Businesses that we use, we work from a balanced stance and a staggered stance. Every year when we bring our linebackers in, this is the first thing that we teach. And I'm guessing you gentlemen do similar things in your programs. Uh, and whatever it is, we use a balanced stance with our inside linebackers, with your feet, both in a balanced position. We want our linebackers to be comfortable. We want our, what we always teach is we have our toes pointed inwards. We feel that that allows us to be explosive coming out of our stances. And you guys are going to have similar things. But we teach this right away to build good habits and to build these building blocks that we have. And we work on it every day at the beginning of practice. Staggered stance, what we do with this is our outside linebackers. Uh, you'll see a couple clips of it here. But we use it uh, with our near foot up. Look at me say near foot, inside foot a lot today. And the reason that we do that is because our outside linebackers play so much in space laterally that we want them to have their hips open so they can turn more easily. With these starts then, we move from our stance into our starts. We feel that at UWL, the athletes that we get are generally pretty good athletes, but they're not Division One athletes. Now, you guys at your high school programs, you're going to feel the same thing. With our linebackers, they're not going to be the fastest guys on the field, but we still feel that they can be extremely efficient and explosive. This is going to allow them to play in our system. Every day when we work with linebacker drills, we work on our starts. We do this before practice, we do this before games, and it's something that we implement because building these building blocks is what's going to make your players efficient and explosive. When we do it, we start. Generally the coach, we say stands up here, and we do three lines. However many you want, come back down. The coach here will dictate. Right away we dictate which foot they're going to start with. How we say it, the different cues that we use, we tell them to put a nail in one foot so that they can explode off the other. We want them to get into their good stance. We say put a nail in your left foot, you're going to explode with your right. Coach will say set go. We want them to start exploding straight downhill. We then switch, put a nail on the right foot, explode left, and then we go 45 degree angles. Okay, and that's just to start, get explosive again. We want those quick trigger muscles moving. At this point, then to work on visual reactions, whoever's your coach, we have them replicate a running back. Linebackers will stay here. If the coach takes a lateral path, this is where the linebackers have to react and they take their 45 degree angles. <coughs> if the coach takes a downhill path, like a running back would, we want them coming straight downhill instead of at those 45 degree angles. Now, every time that we come through, we have our players sprint through five to 10 yards. Uh, it changes just day to day. You can do whatever, but we haven't come to balance. I have that up here. Every time our linebackers make a tackle or come down from gear down from a sprint, we haven't come to balance. Coming to balance, we don't want <coughs> our feet to widen. We want them to stay tight and athletic, but we want our strides to shorten. So when they're coming from a sprint, how we start to teach it is we want short strides, we want them to load up with their hips and their arms, and we want them to swing their arms and hips through at that five yard mark. We continue to teach this every day in these drills because that's going to build those good habits. We talked about those explosive starts. <coughs> um, then I have some edge blitz takeoffs. With these edge blitz takeoffs, what we want is all the weight we want on our front foot. And I've got some uh, game film from this as well. We don't have practice. I don't have practice film on any of it. Just the game stuff. But with our edge blitz takeoff, what we want is that inside or near foot up. If the ball is inside here, we want our right foot up and all of our weight on our front foot. When we do this, we practice it. You can do the same setup that we just had, and we roll our guys through. When they do it, we want them on the front foot, we'll say set go, or pull a ball on a stick, and we want them rolling straight off. If your weight is about 80-20 on that front foot, we don't have fall steps, and again, we're extremely efficient with what we do. <coughs> Being explosive off the edge, this is gonna be the most important part of your blitz <coughs> technique. Um, you know, you can have a lot of different stunts where they're coming inside, but with your base edge blitzes coming off the edge, your most important part is going to be efficiency and explosiveness. Here you'll see this linebacker on the bottom of the screen doesn't start with his inside foot up. But because he's fast and explosive, 
he's still able to get to the quarterback. That's what we're looking for. That's what we're teaching these things for. Linebacker on the top of the screen. You can see he does start with his inside foot up, and he's able to be explosive and get to the quarterback as well. This is another good angle of it. You can see 30 as he comes through. He's got that inside foot up. This is a replication of exactly what we do in practice. The court, if the coach stands back here, it's really easy to have linebackers come off the, you can put cones here, you can put cans out. It's really easy to have the coach say, set go, have the linebackers roll off this inside foot, and get their takeoffs through that back shoulder to the quarterback. This again, it's a similar takeoff. His inside foot up, his inside foot is up as you can see. His weight is about 80-20, where he's, he's able to pick this back foot up if he wants to. He's able to roll off, get into the backfield. And again, what we're looking for is efficiency and explosiveness. We practice these every day in practice, and we're able to replicate them in games. Our basic pass drops that we work on. This again, gentlemen, is going to be extremely skewed. <coughs> base pass drop that we teach at UWL is what we call a crossover run. With this crossover run, it's very easy to set up different landmarks. Different ones that we've used at UWL will be top of the numbers at eight, eight yards, or for our outside linebackers, or for our inside linebackers, running to the hash at 10 yards. Whatever your landmarks are going to be as a defense, that's what you're going to want to do. But if you're going to do it, it's very easy to set up cones as your landmark. Say this is your linebacker's line here. You want to set up a cone here. If that's 10 yards, and they're starting at their five yard flip, where they start from the line of scrimmage, set it up, say set go. You want them to turn and run to that cone. If you do it enough in practice, it doesn't matter. They, they'll forget the landmarks because they're, they won't even think about them because they've done it enough where they're automatically going to end up there. Here we teach running and turning and exploding for three steps, looking at that cone, before looking back to the quarterback. Once they get to their landmark, we have to flatten out so that they're in position to make a play on the football. Um, at that point, once they get to that landmark and they're comfortable with it, we have different things where we can peek back at the quarterback, either move with their eyes or catch a football. Different things that are gonna keep your kids engaged and have fun at practice because that's still important as well. And again, guys, if you, have, if you want clarification with any of this stuff, feel free to raise your hand and we'll clarify. <coughs> so this here, this is going to give you a better example of what our crossover run looks like, rather than me trying to do it up here. As you can see, he turns, he looks out to his flats right away. Now, there's action in the backfield, so this play isn't going to happen here, this throw. But him getting out and getting what and getting width, here our landmark, was hash plus two at 10, he's right at that landmark. Once he gets to that landmark, he now has depth over any flat routes coming in front of him. <coughs> and if this throw were to be made, he's able to come up and make a play on that football because he's got width and depth. Here's some more of the fun stuff that we get into where our kids probably enjoy this more than these things. Um, you know, just a quick note with all this stuff, our, our base stance and starts and crossover run, your players will probably get bored. That's fine. But you need to do this stuff every day so it's imprinted into their brains and it turns into muscle memory. <coughs> Open field angling, angle tackling. This is some of the hardest things that you can do as a linebacker. We see in the Y act at, these, at this point, the amount of spread offenses and speed that we see out of position players, it's crazy. So the best that we can do to replicate that in practice, we work on it every day as well. This first path that we have is called the banana path. We want to defend against downhill paths coming up. How we set it up, like I have up there, is two lines. Cone here, cone here. We have running backs, and we have linebackers. The point of this drill is for linebackers to take good angles on running backs as they run through. We have our running back start at a 50% run. Linebackers, we want to, I'm going to talk a lot today about taking the air out. 
and pressing downhill. If as a linebacker, we want to take this path as opposed to this path. Taking this path here allows for cutbacks by the running back, and you're not making tackles on the other side of the line of scrimmage. We call this a banana, this curved route, a banana path, that we want to take air out, take away that space from the running back, and also take away any cutback lanes. <coughs> this drill here, very easy to run through. And as you get better at it, you increase the speed. Once the players start to get it, it's turn the running backs up to 75%, and eventually turn them up to 100%. Again, we're going to talk about coming to balance and tagging off. Linebackers coming through, as they run past the running back, they're going to come to balance, break down, and they're going to tag off with both hands on the backside hip of the running back. Doing so, we call it staying in the back pocket, because if, if the linebacker is in the back the pocket of this running back, if the running back tries to cut back, the linebacker's there. If the running back continues to run through and they tag off, we know that they're in a good position to make an open field tackle. We generally start with a 10 by 10 box, or around there. But the reason that we do it on these lines is because we want the tackles to be made on the other side of the line scrimmage. Trying to simulate running backs being five yards off and linebackers being five yards off. A couple clips of where this will be utilized in games. <coughs> Here we have a safety demonstrating it, but it's a really good clip to show of taking the air out like we talked about and taking a good banana pad. As you can see, the safety gets downhill in a hurry where he's attacking the running back. That's what we're looking for out of our players. As he's moving through, he's coming straight downhill and he's going to take this path here. That's the quickest path for the running back. At the same time, if this guy were to try to cut back, he's in his back hip pocket. So if he were to cut back, he'd still run into it. He's then able to make a good play in the football. Here we have a good clip of a linebacker coming from his 30 spot and able to make a play on the running back as well. Fighting off the block. Now at this point, the running back's got leverage on him outside. But he's going to take a good angle, take the air out, and we're able to make a tackle at the line of scrimmage. At this point, the running back can't cut back, and we're in a good position to make a tackle. The next progression of that drill, when we talk about the banana path. <coughs> He's implementing a swing route with it, where instead of running and cutting it up inside the cone, <laughs> with the running backs running a swing route in here. We see this run all the time out of these offenses that are implemented in today's game. As he runs a swing route, we have our linebackers match it. If you want, you can have him shuffle from the quarterback here. This can be a coach, you control the ball, you don't have to implement a ball at all. But at this point, the running back just has more leverage on the linebacker, and it causes us to take a wider angle. We see that a lot, so we like to work on it and simulate it in practice. After you've been implemented both of these, with just the running backs running this way, where the linebackers know they're running, you can then start to implement cutbacks. You'll see with your players, we see it every day. Running backs are faster than the linebackers, the linebackers start to cheat. As running backs come here, linebackers try to take that angle because this guy's moving quickly. That's what we're trying to avoid. At this point, the next progression is to allow the running backs to cut back if they think the linebackers over <coughs> plan. Again, if you want to continue to pre take that man path so that you're in the back hip pocket, and if this guy tries to cut back, he should be in a position to still make that tackle. He should run right in. I've got to get a clip of a linebacker in open field making a tackle on a guy trying to cut back up. <coughs> so, coming to 
coming from the very middle of the field. We get a run out to the perimeter. This guy's path, it's been simulated up there. Him running here, linebacker coming inside out. Now, this isn't a picture-perfect tackle by our linebacker. But because he's able to come downhill, and he takes a good angle on the running back, he's in that back hip pocket. When this running back cuts back, he's in a great position to still make the tackle and get him on the ground, which is the goal of playing defense. The final progression with this open field angles that we talk about is an open field box tackle. This is the hardest tackle that your linebackers will have to make. <laughs> Instead of starting him on one side, we start him in the middle. And the running back now has a two-way go. What you'll see out of your linebackers is they will wait at this five-yard mark until the running back picks a side and they'll then chase him. <coughs> this is what we're trying to avoid. Tackling on this side of the line of scrimmage is not what we want. We want to be making our tackles behind the line of scrimmage. So, as you're teaching this, you need to be sure that your linebackers are pressing the line of scrimmage. By doing so, you're taking away any angles that the running backs can have, and we're able to run through our running backs. Here at this point, if our linebacker were to stay back and wait for the wide receiver to pick which direction he wanted to go, that'd be a lot more difficult than pressing the line of scrimmage and making a tackle. As you can see here, he's got five yards of separation. Because our linebacker explodes downhill and takes all the air out of this, He's going to make the tackle and not give the wide receiver a two-way go. <coughs> Heck of a lot easier than waiting at five yards and letting the wide receiver pick which way he wants to go. <coughs> now, with all these drills that we just talked about, we call them our banana drills. All of these to this point have been done with tag-offs, running behind and tagging off on the hip. <coughs> Now we're going to talk about tackling. With all those drills, keep them in mind as we continue to talk about tackling because you're going to be able to use these different tackling techniques in those same drills. To start with tackling, we always tackle from our knees. For safety reasons, we want to teach good habits. We line our players up about two yards across from each other all the way down. At this point, we want to teach good habits. We have our offensive players on their knees with their chest out, their arms out, and sitting up as high as they can. The defensive players are going to sit back on their heels. We want them to practice loading up. I don't think anybody can see them. Okay, that's all right. I'll try to do it here. But what we want is we want our defensive players to load up their hips and their hands at the same time. We always talk about throwing our hands and our hips, grabbing high cloth on the back side, and we're going to talk a lot about hitting the chest plate of the offensive player with our face mask. The reason that we do this, and we'll talk about it with tackling, with block the feet, we want to keep our face mask on the chest plate so that we avoid hitting with the side of our helmet. That's when concussions happen the most that we feel, uh, especially working with the uh, training staffs that we do. So we try to avoid hitting with the side of our head. We want to hit with our face mask. We start with knees, then we move up standing chest to chest. These drills, again, you just line them up next to each other. You probably do similar things. One drill that we do, we do this before practice, during practice, and before games. Uh, we call it heads up tackle. This is probably the most useful drill that we have. Is we have, we'll have a line of linebackers standing, and we'll have a coach right here. The coach takes both players, a defensive player and an offensive player, and puts a hand on each other. Both players then are leaning forward and getting momentum. And as the coach says, set go, he lets go of the helmets. Two players come into each other. Offensive player still has a big chest, open arms, and the defensive player is running through, throwing his hands on his hips, and taking the face mask still through the chest plate, but he's running through the defender now. This is giving both players momentum. Uh, we always get it, it gets us ready for games too because it's a physical drill that the players know and you can wrap it off really quickly. <clears throat> Different times of tackling chest to chest is used in a game.
And we've all seen it before. We can, but it will happen. Obviously, that's why we prep for it. At this point, we're throwing our hands, we're throwing our hips, and we're driving the wide receiver into the ground. That's what we're trying to teach. Right here, you can see he's got his face mask right in the guy's chest plate. He's throwing those hands and those hips at the same time. Another drill that I really like to implement, especially with our inside linebackers, is something that we call close quarters tackling. We have agile bags that we call them, and we use to set up two different running lanes. We have the running back and the linebacker. This is all going to be predicated on the running back. He's going to dictate which side he's going to go to, and they're going to move on his movement. The running back's either going to go into this running lane or this running lane. As he moves, it's now the linebacker's job to react and get to the hole and drive him backwards. This is now, it's not live, we have run live in practice, but the running back's now trying to run through the linebacker. This is that next step. We're still teaching good tackling technique, but this is, you see this all the time in games with our inside linebackers. Here, the linebacker's waiting, waiting for the running back to pick a hole to run through. Once he does, he's able to go meet him in the hole and drive him back. This is something, this drill that I showed you up here on the board is a great representation of some of these inside run plays that you see, especially if you're working with zone. That drill's going to go, oh, yeah. But again here, the running back's gonna pick a hole to run through. Linebacker's gonna go through and meet him. These are gonna be physical drills in practice. You don't wanna do them every day, but it's definitely something that I believe needs to be implemented. <coughs> we then have a leg wrap and roll that we teach. Now this is pretty easily taught. I'm going to use my backpack here. We have these agile bags that I talk about. It's really easy. I should have brought one today. But it's really easy to replicate legs by using an agile bag. And what we have is, is line up two players across from each other, one person holding the bag out at a 45 degree angle. The other player then runs through and wraps up the agile bag just like you would both legs of a running back and you pull in close to your chest. As you add this, if you're teaching, you can do it where you have a wrap and roll at the same time. Uh, whatever you would like. At that point, once your <laughs> linebackers have that technique down, you then have the other player dragging the bag. Linebacker chases it down, and it replicates an in-game situation. This is used in open field situations, anytime when there's a lot of space around, you don't feel like you're going to get a chest to chest tackle, which we all know doesn't happen that often. Linebackers in open space here. This guy's got a two way go. He gets both arms around both legs and he pulls them into his chest. It'll happen in the hole sometimes too. As long as you make sure that you wrap up both legs, it's pretty hard for a running back to run without his legs. Run through. 
through the air. Wraps up both legs and gets the running back on the ground. This is a drill that can be very easily implemented in all your practices. <coughs> Then move into block defeat. We talk with our block defeat, with our three points of contact. We want our hands, face mask, and our foot to all strike at the same time. The reason for this is with our face mask, again, we want our face mask to hit the chest plates when we aren't hitting with the side of our head. This also has a dual purpose when we implement it in block defeat. If you strike a guy with your face mask in his chest, he's going to get shot. As he does this and you strike with your face mask, that's when we want to punch and extend our hands. Because as he gets shot from your face mask, and you extend your hands at that point, he's already back on his heels. We want to step with our face mask, hands, and foot, because as we step our foot in the ground, that's when our hips explode, and we're able to run through. We have a punch drill. This is going to be very similar to drills for tackling. You line up two guys across from each other, and you start with just punch and landing all three of those points of contact at the same time. You said one coach can yell punch. You punch and reset. You punch with the other foot and reset. You flip sides. The other guy goes. <clears throat> so this is used in every single game. You will need to defeat a block. We punch. We get three points of contact in at the same time. Throw them past. <coughs> Here you'll see, again, we don't get face mask on the chest, but we have a good punch. If your players are strong enough to just bench press, that's great. But a lot of times they won't be, so we're able, we need to get hands and feet in the ground at the same time. Here you watch, we've got a big offensive lineman coming out at us. We get a foot in the ground, we get a punch. We get a face mask in the chest plate. We're then able, that's when, if we're explosive and physical and violent with these three points of contact, that's what's going to get offensive linemen off of us. Offensive linemen are going to be bigger than linebackers, but having these punch drills is going to help us a lot. We then move on to a punch, <coughs> a pull, and a rip. With our punch, pull, and rip, we then move into just punch and pull progression, uh, but our punch is going to be three points of contact, and we want to grab the jersey and we want to pull it down to our opposite pocket. As we do this, that's going to get the offensive player off balance, we rip through, and come to balance on the other side. Set up the same drills, gentlemen, and you go, what I like to do as I do this and as I coach it, is I say punch, and then I will say pull, and then I will say rip. And as the players start to get this, then you can go faster. Punch, pull, rip, punch, pull, rip, and then you put it all together, and you just say, say go, and then they do it. Our button separate drill, this is again probably the most useful drill, the most repeated drill that we do along with our heads up tackle. As I said before, you put a hand on each helmet for heads up tackle. You say set go, and you release it. Now instead of running through and tackling the other player, we're working on butting with our head and separating with our hands. That's where we get the button separate drill. But again, we're going to have three points of contact. Both players are going to be leaning forward. We're going to strike with our three points of contact and run through. We do this before every game, before a lot of practices, because it's a physical <laughs> drill that moves quickly. If you're going to take anything, I'd probably take those two drills from this. Uh, those are our most useful ones that we have. You can also do with it button separate, you can implement the push-pull rip with it as well. I'll find you a good example here of a full push-pull rip. So this is where it will be implemented in the game. We have a punch, we have a pull, we have a rip. We're then able to make a tackle right at the line of scrimmage. That's what it would look like full time. Now, moving on to our turnover overview. 
Anytime we recover a fumble, we have two different modes of operations that we can use to recover the fumble. We have recovering in a fetal position and recovering in a scoop and score position. We call it a fetal position because you're going to be on the ground in a fetal position. Uh, this is used in any game situations and anytime the ball is in a pile. We want to talk always about situational. We want, to, we want our kids to learn the game of football. So we always talk about when you would use it, why you would use it. Uh, this at the end of the game, or if it's in a pile, what we want is we want our players, this can be used with all players, not just linebackers though. We want our players to approach the ball from the side, they slide in, they cover up the ball, <coughs> but we want them to cover up the ball, lay on their side, so that no point of the ball is out or showing. At this point, if no part of the ball is showing, the other team can't get it. <coughs> I'll play this in slow motion for you. It's hard to get filmed in the bottom of the piles like this. You can see the linebacker here slides, gets on top of the ball in a fetal position and covers it up. At this point, the other team isn't able to get the ball from us. Here's another good angle of it. Where you can see sliding in, covering up in a fetal position, we recover. The drills that we would use for this, pretty easy. You stand your linebackers, you can do it, you can partner them up if you're looking for most reps possible, which is always good, you partner them up. One player has the football and rolls it out in front. The other player has to go and recover. You then run back and you can switch. If you don't have the number of footballs for that, you line them up in one line. You roll it out, one player goes, recovers it, runs it back to you. The next player comes up. Scoop and score technique that we talk about. This is used when, again, you want to talk about situational stuff at the end of games with the players. This is used if you need to score or if the ball's in the open field where you think you can recover it cleanly. We always talk about you want to feel it like a ground ball. What we do is we get to the side of it to scoop it like a ground ball. We drag our knuckles on the ground, pick it up, and then we run with it. Again, I mean, I talk the other coaches when I gave them this talk made fun of me for beaver. My high school yelled beaver for every fumble. I don't know why they never told me. Uh, but you can, have, you can yell fumble, you can yell beaver, you can yell fire, anything you want. Uh, again, we want to bend at the knees and the waist. You want to scrape your knuckles on the ground and scoop it like a ground ball. I'll show you what it looks like live. point we get to the side of the football, we scoop it up like a ground ball with our knuckles on the ground, and we're then able to run. We get to the side of the football. Now this one's easy because the ball's pretty much laying still. But by getting to the side of it like this, this is proof that even your D lineman can benefit from this drill. Here we have in the back, the lineman picking it up. He gets to the side of it, gets his knuckles to the ground, he's able to scoop it and run with it. <coughs> I'm a little, we have, I have uh, a one man and a two man strip drill here for you that I think are useful. We don't implement them a ton. My belief is, a linebacker is that fumbles happen when you have good solid tackles and running backs aren't going to be ready for it and that's when fumbles happen. And we also have drills that we use in case you're in a position where you need to use it. Uh, with our one man strip drills, we have two players, our lines here, we have a defensive player and an offensive player. Offensive players start with the football and begin to run. Generally we have them going at about 75%. 
you'll see a lot of times what I think is a flaw in the system is running backs when they do fumble drills, they're extremely careless and they just they goof around and have fun with it. What we want is we want our running backs to be carrying the ball outside of their body but still make it game like. And anytime a running back in any game situation feels contact, they're going to button up and they're going to protect the football. So we try to make that as game like as possible. When the linebacker comes, anytime that they feel the linebacker secure the tackle, we want them to button up. This makes it tougher for the linebackers. One thing that we really teach is you need to make all of your contact at one point. I've heard coaches talk before that you secure the tackle and then you punch and rip. I think that in order to do this, you need to secure the tackle and punch and rip at the same time. As you come through and make contact with your outside arm, you need to punch and ripping at the exact same time. Because if you don't, that running back's going to button up, and at that point, you're not going to be able to cause a fumble. So, I mean, implementing the, those ideas into it is going to help you. The other drill is a two-man drill. Uh, anytime you're in a pile, we want our defensive players to be able to pull up the football. So I have them line up in a heads-up position, where if the running back is carrying the ball in this arm, the linebacker is going to be here across from him, and the coach is going to be in the heads-up position. But then you're going to have another player on the other side of the coach. And when they come together, you can still practice good fundamental tackling. But as he tackles, the other player who's free is going to pull up the football. <laughs> Very rarely, I think, do you see on here, like, fumbles happen just when players are running through and pulling up the football. <clears throat> I have a couple clips of fumbles happening just because of good solid tackling. Uh, <coughs> Good solid tackle, I mean, and then we're able, because we practice recovering, we're able to recover that fumble. The other part of turnovers as a defense is interceptions. Uh, the ball drills that we use, I'm sure you guys use all of them, but one thing that I feel is very important to use is to implement our position specific footwork or agility drills into the ball drills. At that point, the ball shouldn't be thrown directly at, directly at them, they should have to make a play. What we do a lot of the time, if you're working with bags, if you're working with footwork stuff, you want to move it laterally over bags, and at that point, when they break, you can throw a football. The other thing that we use a lot is uh, running to a spot for the football and separating it from a receiver. Uh, I was talking earlier, if we have, you see a lot of spot routes by number two receivers and tight ends, it's very easy to line up one player here and a linebacker here have them run spot routes and throw them the football. Linebackers then are able, once they see if you have them breaking on the wide receivers or if you have them breaking on the quarterbacks, once they see this, they break and have to make a play on that throw. This is something that can be simulated in every practice. We have a spot route come here. Our linebacker reads it, runs, and is able to make a play on the football. This is something that we practice a lot. I mean, I'm sure you can imagine doing this drill in practice as well. Having one wide receiver over here running a spot route, have a running back looking him up, or a linebacker <coughs> looking him up, and then take away the football from him. The fun part then about turnovers is returning. Our interception and fumble returns that we do, we use all 11 defenders and we use the coach and the quarterback. At the snap, we generally have a call in, we have our base call. Um, the quarterback or the coach will say set up and he'll take a drop. The defensive line, we always want to preach those good habits, the defensive line is going to get a good takeoff and they're going to chop their feet around the quarterback. As the quarterback drops back, the line's coming up, linebackers are taking their drops, corners and safeties are taking their drops. Coach waits until they get into the drop zone, and he'll then throw it to one of the linebackers or the safeties. As he throws it, the defender must high point the ball, yell whatever you'd like. The near defender has to peel off and block the nearest offensive player to the football. Generally, if it's a corner and there's a wide receiver behind him, that wide receiver is going to be the closest player to be able to make a tackle on him. 
That's why the safety or the linebacker has to peel off and pick him up. As this happens, the defender with the football is getting to the near sideline, and the rest of the defense is also going to that near sideline to get out in front of him. We always teach that the defensive player gets one cutback near the goal line. So here, we have him making a play in the football. As soon as he intercepts it, this guy's checking. <coughs> Here's the offensive players on the ground, so he gets out in front. This guy that intercepted the ball is going to the nearest sideline. As soon as he gets there, he has one cut back near the goal. He does this, and we score. <coughs> this is something we scored a lot on defense over the last five years because we practice it a lot. Getting to the near sideline, we've got a cavalry out in front of him, he gets one cut back. <laughs> Here we get the ball. Safety and linebacker check, backside. These guys aren't in a position to make the tackle. At that point, you can then try to run up the field with them. He gets to the nearest sideline. He gets one cut back near the goal line, and we score. We then implement very similar drill with our fumble recovery. You can do all 11 defenders. You can do just your front seven if you're looking for an extra drill to use while your corners are out. Your secondary can be out doing something. Um, well, we have a quarterback and a running back. We say set go, hand it off, running back comes into the middle, the whole defense will then come and chop their feet around him, running back then fumbles it either into the pile or out into space. We want to scoop and score, as if we scoop and score, again we want to get all the way to the near sideline, and you can make one, one cut back near the goal. Get in a good position to cover the fumble and scoop and score. And we're already at the nearest sideline. And it helps if you have fast players. <laughs> then the rest of it doesn't matter. 